to all today we going to discuss the paper titled design of plasmonic rectangular ribbon antenna based on graphene for terahertz band communication so let's start the discussion on this paper we'll start with introduction first so graphene has gained special consideration over the recent years in academic and industry societies graphene as one atom thick 2d and honeycomb lattice material has been studied in large number of applications due to its novel properties such as mechanical chemical thermal electronic and optical properties so here they are defining graphene as a, a one atom thick or single atom thick sheet of carbon till it is considered as a 2d structure or 2d material and the the arrangement of atoms is in honeycomb lattice uh, structure pattern now terahertz band communication is considered to be a new region in wireless frequency band that yields large number of utilization in conventional networking scenarios the antenna would be counted as one of the vital components in wireless technology plasmonic antennas based on graphene in terahertz band not in the not in the infrared re frequency region are proposed as an interesting solution for new wireless technology in these reference papers now confined electromagnetic waves which couple to surface electric charges are thought to be surface plasma polariton waves at the interface between a substrate and noble metal such as silver or gold so here they are trying to define surface plasma polariton waves as they are saying that uh, confined electromagnetic waves when coupled with the surface electric charges of uh, of the metal then it gives rise to or or it generates surface plasmon polariton waves where so at the interface between the substrate and a noble metal no, noble metal such as silver or gold in near infrared and visible frequency regions noble metals are generally used in plasmonic devices due to their small imaginary part and large negative real part of permittivity <coughs> here we see that for noble metals the permittivity is complex and uh, it is having large negative real part and small imaginary part apart from that the important thing they have mentioned here is that for noble metals surface surface plasma polariton waves are generated at which frequency so at near infrared and visible frequency region which is hundreds several hundreds of terahertz so now they want to say that spp wave propagation is supported by noble metals at the mentioned frequency region this is the important thing here to note that uh, metals do support surface plasma polariton waves but at uh, at near infrared and visible frequency region while we want it at terahertz however it can be reached at much lower frequencies when the spp wave propagation is supported by graphene so this is uh, this statement is giving the significance of graphene here at terahertz frequency if we want surface plasma polaritons at terahertz frequency then graphene is the answer surface plasma polariton waves are excited at the interface between substrate and graphene layer as we have read earlier also that the uh, electromagnetic waves are confined and uh, coupled with uh, surface electric charges at the interface between substrate and the noble metal so here in case of graphene the inter uh, the interface will be between substrate and graphene here the substrate above graphene uh, can be air also now an important difference among characteristics of graphene and noble metals in terahertz and mid infrared frequency range are low losses more confinement mechanical strength and tunable complex conductivity because of graphene surface conductivity function here they are giving the significance of graphene graphene or a positive comparison of graphene with noble metals so what are these positive points in terahertz frequency these are the, the low losses more confinement mechanical strength of graphene tunable complex conductivity of graphene so these are some plus points of graphene at terahertz 
Now the paper proposes and analyzes a new idea based on SPP wave characteristics in graphene in terahertz band, which is implemented for a novel terahertz ribbon antenna. <coughs> so here they have given the idea of what they are going to do in this paper. Now the second part part of the paper is conductivity of graphene. Graphene conductivity is introduced as a functional <coughs> of complex surface conductivity sigma g omega mu c gamma and t. So here they are saying that sigma g which is graphene's conductivity is a function of omega which is frequency in radian mu c is in chemical potential is chemical potential gamma is the scattering rate t is the temperature sigma g is a function of multi parameters which change the surface conductivity of graphene to achieve a tunable frequency band in design now they are giving the meaning of these uh, parameters omega which is uh, radian frequency mu c which is chemical potential they are saying that the chemical potential depends on doping of chemical carrier intensity and electrostatic bias these are the thing on which chemical potential depends and chemical potential controls surface conductivity of graphene apart from that temperature t and relaxation time tau here tau is related with scattering rate gamma as gamma equals to 1 upon tau here gamma is known as phenomenological logical scattering rate which is supposed to be independent of energy now further moving we see that the surface conductivity of graphene based on cubo formula includes two parts intraband contribution and interband contribution here they want to say that the surface conductivity of graphene according to cubo formula is divided into two parts intraband contribution and interband contribution physically the interband formalism depends on electron hole pair generation and recombination the intraband formalism corresponds to free carrier conductivity so here they have given short intro about the interband and intraband part of the surface conductivity of graphene when the frequency is below infrared range here means they are saying that if the frequency is in terahertz range the terahertz range is from 0.1 to 10 terahertz so the intraband dominates in the total conductivity of graphene so they are saying that for 0.1 to 10 terahertz the dominating part of the conductivity in the total conductivity is the intraband part otherwise the interband sigma inter is predominant so apart from that the other the remaining range is uh, from 10 terahertz to hundreds of terahertz so for that range the interband part of conductivity will be dominating so here since they are targeting the antenna of terahertz band so uh, they'll they'll be concentrating on intraband conductivity of graphene now it is supposed that the conductivity of graphene is an isotropic and there is no external magnetic field so here they want to they are going to define or they are defining the surrounding of the antenna as they are saying that the graphene is an isotropic and having no external magnetic field. Now the graphene conductivity includes both interband and intraband terms as we can see here sigma g equals sigma intra plus sigma inter. Now also the intraband conductivity can be calculated as this. So here they have given the formula for intraband conductivity as you can read it like this i e square k b t upon pi h bar square omega plus i 2 gamma in bracket mu c over k b t plus 2 natural log of e raised to the power of minus of mu c over k b t plus 1 so this is the formula for intraband conductivity as we can see here it depends on many parameters such as chemical potential Boltzmann constant temperature then radian frequency omega then scattering rate gamma h bar is the reduced Planck's constant apart from that uh, e is the temperature is the charge of electron the interband conductivity of graphene can be approximated for kbt very less than mu c comma h bar omega as this so this is the formula for interband conductivity as we, as we have discussed, uh, the KB is Boltzmann constant, H bar is the reduced Planck's constant. The reduced Planck's constant is given by H upon 2 pi. Now the surface current density on graphene sheet. 
which is the tangential electric field product surface conductivity of graphene is mentioned as this. Now they are saying that the surface current density is given by conductivity of graphene multiplied by tangential electric field. So as we know it from Ohm's law, J equals to sigma into E, surface conductivity of graphene is, is given by this. And uh, the other uh, relation of uh, surface conductivity of graphene is uh, N cap cross H at X equals to zero plus minus H at X equals to zero minus. Here H is what? Magnetic field intensity. The edge effects of graphene conductivity having lateral size larger than 100 nanometer can be ignored. The age, they are saying that the edge effects of graphene conductivity can be ignored if the size or lateral size means the length of graphene sheet is greater than 100 nanometer. So here they are giving this condition. Now this next page they have given the design of the ribbon antenna they have drawn using graphene as we can see uh, this is having a micro strip line and uh, a ribbon like structure of made up of graphene there is a substrate with thickness h and this is the dimension of uh, the ribbon antenna the conductivity of k g l s equals k of graphene layers in the lateral direction of a structure can be calculated the summation individuals g l sigma k as follows this here i think uh, by g l they want uh, to say about uh, graphene layer let's check it once mm. They have not explained it earlier. What is GL? Let us submit. Let us suppose that uh, this they are talking about graphene layer. So they are saying maybe as much I can understand. They are saying for k layers of graphene, this will be the overall conductivity. Now, analytical and numerical approach. Dispersion equation for SPP. This is an important part of uh, a graphene antenna. So, please concentrate here. To determine, to determine the SPP wave propagation properties in graphene, the complex propagation constant K SPP equals K naught into N effective is introduced. Here they are defining complex propagation constant KSPP. It is the propagation constant of surface plasma polyton waves equals K0 into N effective. Here K0 is the wave number related to free space and is given by 2 pi by lambda0. And where lambda0 is the free space wavelength. N effective is the complex effective index of SPP modes. Now KSPP highly depends on the permittivity and permeability of the materials surrounding multilayer graphene MLG sigma omega K. So if we are having multilayer graphene then KSPP will be depending on the permeability and the permeability and permittivity and the permeability of materials. Now graphene can support two types of SPP modes. This is an important phrase here that graphene can support two types of SPP modes these are TM and TE however the TM mode can be propagated in terahertz band because of imaginary part of conductivity so here they want they are sharing this information that for the TM mode the conductivity graphene conductivity is having imaginary part in order to determine KSPP for TM mode equation number 6 can also be derived as mentioned in 13 here they are targeting equation number 6 let's check uh, ok so it is in the next page equation number 6 yes 
in order to determine the KSPP for TM mode, the equation number 6 here can also be derived as mentioned in 13 and the following dispersion equation for SPP is this. So here they have achieved the dispersion relation for TM mode where N is the refraction index of substrate, sigma omega is the conductivity conduct, conductance of the 2D graphene layer. By using a different approach, the dis dispersion equation is also calculated for TM modes as follows. So there is another form of dispersion relation is given. The form in equation number 6 is in terms of reflection index, refraction index, sorry. While here the form is in uh, KSVP and epsilon r, permittivity. Here it is important to note that epsilon r1 and epsilon r2 are the permittivities of dielectric dielectrics above and below graphene. Suppose uh, graphene is between uh, air and uh, silicon dioxide. So epsilon r1 will be the permittivity of air and epsilon r2 will be the permittivity of silicon dioxide. And sigma omega will be the conductivity of uh, graphene layer. It is important to know the effects of graphene layers. Single layer graphene is more practical than multi layer graphene for terahertz circuits such as transmission lines, filters, etc. Multi layer graphene is more applicable because of because of increasing the efficiency showed in section four for fewer graphene layers such as single layer graphene, EM waves are more confined than the multi layer graphene where it is not appropriate in propagation. So here they are kind of give, here they are giving comparison kind of stuff between the multi layer graphene and single layer graphene and uh, they, are, they are saying to prefer single layer graphene as for, for single layer graphene EM waves are more confined than multi layer graphene. By increasing graphene layers, the real part of complex effective index of SPV modes is decreased. Here they are, they are giving another relation that uh, if we increase the graphene layers, then the real part of complex effective index of SPV modes will decrease. So this can be an important uh, uh, an important uh, information. Now let's move further for numerical analysis. So they have said said that they are they have used uh, Comsol to implement this uh, calculation. Comsol is interesting to solve any structure because of the frequency domain model model study. In order to compute the propagation constant, propagating mode shapes as well. Mode analysis is used for a desired frequency in graphene patch. The thickness of single layer of graphene they have taken as 0.34 nanometer so, so they have taken the thickness of graphene as 0.34 nanometer which is highly small due to huge contrast between lateral size and other dimensions they are saying that the size of graphene layer is comparatively very large and its thickness is very smaller small less than one nanometer it is around one third of nanometer and other dimensions classical meshing method is not suitable at all they are saying that if we will take the thickness of graphene layer as 0.34 nanometer then the meshing for such a small thickness will be very high and it will take too much simulation time if we do it normally the solution is using surface current density for mode analysis which decreases runtime so extremely. Here they are saying that using surface current density, we can decrease the runtime. On the graphene patch, J surf is the surface current density, which is the tangential electric field cross surface conductivity of graphene as mentioned in equation number four. We have seen that uh, current density J equals to sigma into E. EM wave is more confined on graphene edges than the middle of its surface. So they are giving a characteristic of EM waves on graphene that it is more confined at the edges of graphene. By this approach, a new idea is implemented to design a novel graphene driven antenna. As we can see here, they have just taken the edges of the graphene edge antenna, not the middle structure. They have just uh, keep it slotted. 
and hence it looks like a ribbon. So the idea of graphene based ribbon antenna is originated and presented. So this is how they have presented the idea of ribbon antenna. Results and discussions. So they have discussed every aspect of their design. They have started with it with uh, antenna design. The primary dimensions of a rectangular patch in the desired frequency resonant low terahertz band frequency is inspired by the initial values of 7 to 15. So they have given the reference of some papers from which they have taken the dimensions of the patch antenna. And then the graphene based plasmonic ribbon antenna is introduced and shown in figure 2. The resonant length LP is about half of the surface plasmon polariton wavelength lambda SPP. So usually uh, when we design a patch antenna the length is half of the wavelength lambda. But since uh, here it is graphene which supports surface plasma polariton waves. So now we will be considering the wavelength as lambda SPP not lambda. So dimension of the patch is very small than the actual lambda dimension. The optimum values are chosen from the parametric study using CST. So they have given that uh, they have done some parametric study also to get the optimum values of dimensions. Figure 2 shows the geometry of the proposed ribbon antenna. On graphene, the antenna has a ground plane and rectangular ribbon width of 10 micrometer. They have taken the width of ground plane as 10 micrometer and the width of the ribbon is also 10 micrometer. Graphene is separated by SiO2 substrate. The substrate they have taken is silicon dioxide or silica we can say. The thickness of single layer graphene is about 0.34 nanometer. Due to achieving higher efficiency, multi-layer graphene and optimum chemical potentials are used and analyzed. So they have calculated the optimum value of chemical potential obviously using parametric analysis and uh, they have taken multiple layers of graphene also. Now they are discussing simulation results. The return loss results for varying parameter values are simulated using CST. Waveguide port is used to excite the graphene ribbon antenna as we can see here in the design. We see that uh, the it is like a transmission line feed so here they must have given the waveguide feed to this antenna. Now the graphene antenna is placed over an SiO2 dielectric, silica dielectric with epsilon R equals 3.9 and a ground plane. So they have taken relative permittivity of uh, silica as 3.9. Solutions of the dispersion equation by Combs rule of structures having n effective equals to this is calculated at the resonant frequency. So they have used COMSOL to solve the dispersion equation. The dimensions are in order of micrometer listed in the table 1. So here in table 1 they have listed the dimension. We can see it here. The width of the patch they have taken as 133 micrometer. Length of the patch is around 92 micrometer. B which is the width of the feed line is in 10 micrometer. Height of the substrate is 25 micrometer. Uh, while chemical potential they are taking it as 0.4 electron volt. Graphene layers, they have taken 10 graphene layers here. And tau, the relaxation time they have taken as 0.5 picosecond. Now, the return loss plot of the rectangular antenna based on graphene for different chemical potentials mu c in low terahertz frequency band is shown in figure 3. So here in figure 3 they have shown the return loss plot. As we can see they are varying chemical potential from 0.3 to 0.5 and they are showing the uh, variation in the return loss plot. Also efficiency plot for different chemical potential is shown in figure 4. Based on figure 3 and figure 4 chemical potential is chosen 0.4 electron. So first they calculated uh, the return loss plot and then they have calculated the efficiency plot. And then they have decided which chemical potential they should pick. So as we can see the 
0.4 chemical potential is showing uh, medium values for uh, return loss as well as for efficiency around 25 percent so this this is the justification they have given for taking chemical potential as 0.4 electron volt now next keeping the dimensions of the proposed antenna fixed the graphene layers of ribbon rectangular antenna are introduced so first they have fixed the dimension and then they have uh, in, introduced number of layers of graphene figure 5 shows the efficiency of various multi layer graphene figure 5 here in figure 5 they have varied the graphene layers from 6 to 8 to 10 layers and they have found that uh, for uh, for 10 layers of graphene the efficiency is around 25 percent while for six layer it is merely ar around 15 percent so this is the justification they have given for taking 10 layers of graphene figure 5 shows the efficiency of various multi-layer graphene the efficiency values are simulated by cst the behavior of surface plasmon polariton wave propagation in cross section of the propagation length is suggested in figure 6 by using console at various frequencies. So here they are giving justification using figure 6 normal electric fields in volt per meter of SPP waves in propagation length. Cross section of 10 layer graphene based rectangular patch antenna with WP equals 133 micrometer at frequency 0.68 terahertz, 0.77 terahertz, and 0.84 terahertz. As we can see, for 0.84 terahertz, uh, the maximum intensity is around maximum electric field intensity is around 120, while for 0.77 it is around 140, and for 0.68 terahertz it is around 160. The electric field profile in figure 6 shows the field confinement at the edges which is common in graphene structures. Besides, it has a plasmonic behavior as well. Also, the top-down view of the electric field on the entire structure is depicted in figure 7. They have depicted uh, the top-down view also in figure 7. This is the electric field view. Of the ribbon antenna. They have simulated it using CST. The directivity plot of graphene based ribbon antenna as table 1 is shown in figure 8. The radiation patterns of the simulated graphene based ribbon antenna at resonant frequency are presented in figure 9. So here they have given the directivity plot as well as the radiation pattern. As we can see, the directivity is around 6 dBi to 4 dBi. Is varying from 6 to 4 dBi in the range of 0 0.64 to 0 0.84 terahertz. Now they have given some discussions on it also. <coughs> Conductivity of graphene is a functional functional of chemical potential. So figure 3 suggests the impedance bandwidth of the proposed antenna depends on the chemical potential and shows tunable behavior frequency range band. Due to various values of chemical potential, conductivity has directly effect on propagation efficiency. Next, the effect of chemical potential on efficiency is shown in figure 4. Figure 5 shows obviously the confinement and enhancement of SPP waves are, are lessened by increasing the layers. So, by increasing graphene layers, propagation efficiency is achieved a better behavior. Due to 5, conductivity of graphene is augmented by using more layers. Effect of layers on propagation efficiency is discussed in section number 3. The real part of N effective is lessened by increasing graphene layers. The dimensions and characteristics of desired frequency band for the graphene antenna are selected from figure 3 to 5. It is noted that a small, smaller size of graphene thickness decreases the efficiency. They are saying that if uh, they keep a small thickness of graphene, the efficiency is reduced. Because of fewer graphene layers such as SLG, EM waves are more confined than MLG where it is not appropriate in propagation. By tuning number of layers, 
and chemical potential, the impedance bandwidth can be adjusted and the desired terahertz frequency range with the required gain and efficiency is achieved. Now, normal electric fields of SPB waves are shown in figure 6 at 0 0.68, 0 0.77 and 0.84. These SPB waves are related to graphene based rectangular patch antenna, not ribbon antenna. Confinement of SPPs are occurred in the graphene edges. Figure 6 and 7 suggest the distribution of electric field on the graphene edges are at least 10 times more than the surface of it. So here they are showing that the edges of graphene ribbon antenna are getting more surface plasma polyton waves than the remaining area. Now Figure 6 7 suggests that the distribution of electric fields on graphene edges are at least 10 times more than the surface of it. So, the idea of graphene ribbon antenna is introduced. Here again, they have given the justification for the idea that they have taken the ribbon antenna for graphene made up of graphene for terahertz. Noble metals such as gold support SPP wave order of hundreds terahertz, but graphene can support it at low frequency band terahertz. So, again, they have repeated the Justification why they have taken graphene instead of noble metals. The directivity of proposed graphene based ribbon antenna is shown in figure number 8 as we have seen just presenting a good behavior. The cut of the radiation pattern E plane and H plane exhibits typical broadside pattern at resonant frequency. Here at figure number 9, they have given this radiation pattern. We can see it here. Figure number A, B, and C, the E plane in XZ plane. while E plane in YZ plane is given in B and uh, H plane in XY plane is given in figure C. Now they have given the conclusion that in this paper a novel plasmonic graphene based ribbon antenna has been presented and analyzed. Graphene and its behavior were studied to support SPP in terahertz band but not the infrared region. It shows SPP waves are more confined on graphene edges than the middle of its surface Again and again, they have given the explanation for the idea that ribbon antenna they have used. Also, no available precise dimension design as of now, but this paper conducts this matter in details and shows that tunable frequency band can be provided by this new idea design. So here, no doubt they have given a novel, novel idea of designing a uh, ribbon antenna using graphene at terahertz. This is how they have concluded this paper. I hope uh, this information was helpful for you, thanks from my side.